Relax. It's our jungle out there. Hello. I am C-3PO, Human Cyborg Relations. Welcome aboard the Star Speeder 3000. Hello again, everyone. We'll be getting underway momentarily. This is Seeker. Listen up. We've got to get in, grab the Iguanodon, and get out before that asteroid hits. Let's roll! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, get ready to meet all your favorite Disney stars as the Magic Kingdom proudly presents... W... W... Your information station. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the WDW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I am your host, Lou Mangello, and this is show number 381 for the week of October 12th, 2014. I am here, as always, to help you have the best possible Disney vacation experience and bring you a little bit of Disney magic wherever you are with this podcast, which you can find over at iTunes, as well as my videos, blog, live events, books, audio tours, newsletter, iPhone app, and more. You can find everything over at www.radio.com. So some of Walt Disney World's most wonderful yet overlooked dining experiences can be found not in the resort restaurants, but in their lounges. They offer a relaxing getaway, and in many cases, a menu that will pleasantly surprise you. So this week, I invite you to sit alongside me at a quiet, quaint table at Meisner's Lounge at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa for a live restaurant review. We'll sample many, many items from the extensive and unique menu, as well as a few of their signature cocktails. Then I'll have the answer to our last Walt Disney World trivia question of the week and pose a new challenge for your chance to win a Disney prize package. Then stay tuned to the end of the show as I'll have some updates and announcements, including information about our next meet of the month in Walt Disney World and meet in November out in Disneyland. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the WDW Radio Show. I love doing most on the show and the blog and the videos is introducing you to overlooked experiences at Walt Disney World that you might not otherwise think of, right? I love sharing history and trivia and details and ways to enhance your experiences in the parks, but really sometimes it is about finding those hidden gems throughout the parks and the resorts and downtown Disney and some of those out of the way places and nooks and crannies that might not necessarily be on your radar. And yes, if you've listened to the show before, chances are many of those places revolve around food, much like the topic of this week's show and live review. Oftentimes when I do live restaurant reviews, it's a counter service or it's a sit down restaurant. But one of the things I think is very much off people's radar are the lounges at a lot of the different resorts. Now in the past, I've done a live restaurant review of the Territory Lounge over at Disney's Wilderness Lodge, which is one of my favorites. And today, I'm at one that I have enjoyed so many times in the past, just sitting around with friends and having a late night drink and listening to the music in the background. But tonight, we're doing a live restaurant, a live review, not just of the lounge and the ambiance and the drinks, but you might not realize that Meisner's Lounge at Disney's Grand Floridian has an amazing and very unique menu as well. And tonight I am joined by my friend and frequent, what are you now, three-time, three-time winner of Dream Team Charity Auctions, Frank from Texas, right? Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. I'm not gonna, we're not going to ask if you're a Cowboys fan or not. So I want to say thank you, first of all, for your contributions to the Dream Team. You have been very, very generous in the past. We have become friends as a result of this. You came out to the Dallas on the road event a couple of weeks ago, so it's great to see you home again. Yes, thank you, Lou, and uh, I have to thank my wife. <laughs> first of all, for letting me break out of our family vacation. We are here for a week, and uh, we're three days into it to go do this, but also to support the uh, Dream Team donations. Um, you know, quick story is we were flying down for a cruise in April, and uh, the airlines waited for everybody to board for a Make-A-Wish family. And it was just really, really touching. And as you know, I have a 22-month-old, which puts everything else yeah. in perspective now. So it's a great cause, and, uh, and I'll keep donating it with or without the auctions. 
Well, thank you again. It's very much appreciated. And I understand when you see a Wish family coming to the park, because it really hits home and it really makes you understand a lot more clearly where the money really is going to and for, for families that really sort of need this magic that we talk about and, and sometimes take for granted. Oh, absolutely. So you, you hug your kid a little extra and then, you know, you could, you could reach into your pocket and, and help make that dream come true. And you've done a phenomenal job, right? How much have you raised to date? Uh, it's not me. It's you. And the, those who are listening, um, you know, raised more than a quarter of a million dollars for Make-A-Wish Foundation. So that, that's a lot of families that it helps. Right. So it's about $8,000 a family. So if you do that math, which I'm not about to do... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just awesome, and you got to keep it up. I think the listeners will keep uh, donating, and a little piece of Lou will give the incentive for people and spread the word about the charity. Awesome, and this is cool. And we have done. So let me think. We have done the Plaza Restaurant. We, did do that. we have done Whispering Canyon breakfast. Yeah, and, and, and we're not allowed to show those pictures anymore no, because I, uh, no, no, no. I think Lou and I both went on a diet <laughs> after that <laughs> breakfast. I saw those pictures and I said, yeah, I think I'll skip the bread dicks a couple weeks. I think that's the video. I think that's those are the pictures that killed Fat Lou. <laughs> <laughs> it killed Fat Frank too. Uh, you know, and my wife, she said, oh, you're really, you're going to go on a diet? We'll make this happen. And barring something catastrophic, I don't imagine we're going to be dancing around Miser's Lounge on horseback either. You know, and I, <laughs> and judging by the menu, we won't need any ketchup. Yeah, yeah, and, and so I will tell you, like I said before, I've been here before, just coming to the Grand Floridian with friends. There's this great big table in the corner, and oftentimes we'll sit and we'll have a couple of drinks, and you can listen, and you can probably hear the. Uh, the pianist in the lobby or the Grand Floridian Society Orchestra, which is phenomenal, um, and they've been here for literally decades. But I never thought to try the menu here, usually because I've just finished eating at Citrico's or Narcoosie's or the cafe downstairs. No, it, it looks like a phenomenal menu. I can't wait to try it, and especially at the end of the day. Um, to have a, an adult beverage and some a good meal, a little change of pace from the typical park food, and it's really relaxing, right? It's a casual atmosphere, and there's small tables, and it's intimate, so you can really just kind of decompress at the end of the day. Yeah, and you know, so many people, Frank, talk about the Grand Floridian as, oh, it's too formal, it's too stuffy, it's too, and it's not that at all. I mean, we've seen so many families in here with kids. We're just wearing shorts and sneakers and very casually dressed. I mean, you don't, you have to sort of get that that idea out of your mind if that's how you perceive what the Grand Floridian is like. Uh, all you have to do is look out the window at the pool and say that this isn't too stuffy. I mean, you have the uh, the Mad Hatter tipping teapot, which my son was drooling over while we were waiting for this. So the, the pool is phenomenal out here. And, you know, it's a little touch of class that maybe you don't normally get to do, right? If you're going to save for a big vacation, sometimes it's, it's worth going big. And uh, I'll link to it in the show notes, but we did a, uh, a show about the things that we love about the Grand Floridian. And I think people often overlook the dining options here as well. You know, you think Grand Floridian, you may think of Victorian Alberts and, oh, it's that special honeymoon, special event kind of place. It's a once in a lifetime. And, or Citrico's or Narcoosie's. But I'll let me tell you, the Grand Floridian Cafe is awesome, and now that they've just redone Gasparilla's, which is 24 hours, you know, those are two places, again, off the radar if you're not staying here, that have phenomenal food options. And the Mary Poppins breakfast. The Mary Poppins breakfast, you know, I'm not a big buffet guy, but, you know, when Mary Poppins comes by and, you know, gives you breakfast. And then there's the Wonderland Tea Party and the Perfectly Princess Tea Party. I mean, there's some really neat things you could do here, and a lot of them are geared towards kids. And I think that's what a lot of people don't realize. They say, oh, Narcoosie's, it's more formal, Citrico's, it's not for kids. 1900 Park Fair, character breakfast with Mary Poppins, it's totally meant for families. Yeah, and, you know, while we were waiting, my son was crawling around the gift shop. And, you know, one of the, the manager came by and gave him a toy and started talking to him and started engaging. And it's still Disney magic and it's still family oriented. Yeah, I love it. I, I love it. So, but, you know, when I got here a, a little early and, and started going through the lounge fair, which is available from 4.30 to 10 p.m., it really is not like typical bar menu, right? It's not going to be sliders and chicken wings and nachos. There is a slow roasted Berkshire pork belly with smoked jalapeno, sweet onion, and hibiscus barbecue sauce at $17. Veal bolognese, slow braised veal with palma roasted tomatoes, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Parmesan Reggiano over sopressata pasta, that's $14. Lamb, I'll let you pronounce this one, lamb al bondiga. Spanish for meatball. 
Is it really? Yeah. Oh, look at you. Bring it. You see that? Soft. It's, well, great. Lamb meatballs. So soft lamb meatballs, slow braised and aromatic curry tomato sauce and creamy herb polenta with sharp crumbled feta. That's $16. Crisp flatbread with goat cheese, brandy bra- I'm literally drooling. Brandy braised onions, crispy arugula, olives, a light oil, and basil leaves is $13. I don't know what PEI mussels are. I'm sure- Prince Edward Island. Oh, look at you, you culinary show off. It's like, <laughs> it's like being with Guy Fieri. A s- a spiced palm- Palma Rosa tomato sauce, crisp Chardonnay, and caramelized garlic. That's $12. The artisanal cheese selection. Features cheeses from Holland, Italy, and an Irish blue cheese that's $16. Sautéed shrimp with feta cheese. I know what that is. Especially squeezed lemon, cilantro, ripe tomatoes, hint of garlic, and sharp feta, $15. But wait, there's more. A charcuterie. Oh, my God. I, I'm, I, I'm salivating. Uh, prosciutto de parmo, super sod, dried pork cop, a brief bajol, palacios chorizo, Domestic, artisanal salami, pecorino romano, dates, bread and butter pickles, and marcona almonds. That's $16. And finally, certainly not least, crispy fried polenta, napa cabbage, and jicama slaw, and harissa. That is $9. All right, so Frank, I I sort of blew through that menu, but I could have taken time. Like, Like I said, not traditional, even for Disney, lounge fair. Now, and you know what the really good part about this is you go on vacation you could try new and interesting things and they're, you know, we'll see when they come out but you could sample things. You could order a couple and kind of eat it tapas style you know, and, um, and they have wine pairings for every one of them. We won't go through it but they have wine suggestions if that's your thing and they got a pretty good wine list and a good specialty cocktail list it looks like. Yeah, I was going to say there is a, a pretty extensive wine menu including the Epic I've never actually heard of an Epic wine which is offered by the Ounce they have a monogram Pinot Noir, Willamette Valley, which is $88 a glass. Uh, I don't know what an $88 glass of wine tastes like, and I'm probably not, not going to find out tonight. But Well, that's because we'll be ordering the $245 a glass Penfolds uh, Shiraz. Well, it's a Shiraz from <laughs> South Australia. Oh, it's an 09, which is a great year. I, I don't odd, know. Not odd number of years are always the way to go. Is that what it is? Oh, that's right, yes. I, cause clearly, I know nothing. But look, you know, I... I I love a glass or two of wine, but I'm certainly not a wine aficionado. But the nice thing is, is that they do have that kind of selection here because there is somebody who's going to go, by the way, do you have the uh, South Australia 2009? Well, and they, they have the uh, the Louis XIII. You could get that as a half ounce pour for $70 or two ounces for $255. And it, that's about a $1,300 bottle if you buy it just in the store. So uh, not, not insignificant. The deal with that, though, here's the little 102 tip for you, <laughs> is you wait till there's about an ounce left in the bottle, order the last ounce. They let you keep the bottle, and you sell the bottle on eBay for about 400 bucks. Look at you. No wonder how you pay for your trips. I mean, I don't know how you pay for the Louis the Thirteenth in the first place. They also have a number of specialty cocktails. And this is what I like, too. Miser's does not have the the um, the same menu that a lot of the bars and restaurants have. They have a, a Meisner cooler, which is St. Germain, Nolitz gin, lime juice, simple syrup, soda water, fresh mint, 1275, platinum margarita, grand cocktail, grand champagne cocktail, variety of martinis, classic cocktails like a Manhattan and a Rusty Nail, and even a, a, a little cigar bar. So if you're looking for a little Cohiba or a, a Hemingway to go along with your single malt scotch like it's nice that they offer these kind of things and again this is sort of where Meisner's is maybe a step up from some of the other resort lounges and they're all premium spirits uh, they're all listed by name brands the Manhattan's a maker's mark Manhattan for example for $12 which is not unreasonable because you go out to most restaurants you'll probably pay uh, $10 or $12 so that's pretty I think pretty reasonable prices for going out to a restaurant and it's all name brand spirits yeah and, and what's nice about this is you know, we were actually just talking to somebody who came over. We were sort of joking about, you know, in Disney, especially during busy times of year, you need to know what park you're going to be in, where you're going to want to eat. In some cases, like Be Our Guest, you can even decide what you want to eat six months in advance. And sometimes it's tough. We're here. You could just walk into a lounge any time of night. It's not very busy. And you you have the ability to order things other than, like I said, not that there's anything wrong with chicken nuggets and french fries, but, you know... Pork belly and veal bolognese and mussels and sautéed shrimp. Like, this is not just sort of a 
uh, a simple bar sharing menu. I mean, this this is clearly, and obviously we're going to find out tonight, uh, a- able to be a full meal. Yeah, the fact that we can't pronounce half the things on the menu, you know is, it's got to be, be a good sign. <laughs> but you got to remember, you know, the, it's vacation for the adults, too. It's not about the children. Yeah. And this isn't something, you know, you probably would get every day. Uh, so it's good to take a break from it. And it's also good to have a good adult beverage to go along with it. And this is something I don't normally say, especially when it comes to sharing food. But I almost wish there was more people here so I could justify ordering all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine items on the appetizer menu. We were talking about diets, weren't we? <laughs> I think we're in trouble. I think we need Just to- when I thought he was gone, Fat Lou was back in. So uh, when I was going through this, and as you were reading through, what were some of the ones that, that kind of jumped out at you? Um, at first, I thought we were going to need a bigger table. <laughs> we need a bigger boat, Lou. <laughs> um, the artisanal cheeses actually sound good. Um, the the lamb's always good. I mean, it just sounds amazing. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to pick a couple of them. We'll have to maybe pick numbers or something. I'm going to have to ask her, too. Like, I'm always curious, what, what is their favorite thing on the menu? Because they've obviously seen this all come out. Um, I know it's fried, but I'm a polenta guy. So I, I might just have to just because. Oh, there's also the veal bolognese, too. And bolognese, like, that's my death row meal, just so you know. Like, when it's time for me to get the chair and they ask me what I want, it's going to be angel hair pasta bolognese and really good Italian meatballs and sausage. Yeah, or Spanish meatballs in this case. Or, or right, yeah. well, well, albondiga. Albon. <laughs> albondiga. Whatever. <laughs> Adios. All right, so, you know, and the, oh, my God, even the fl- a flatbread with goat cheese, I hear, like, braised onions. Like, that sounds, all right, so maybe we'll, we'll skip the flatbread. get a recommendation on some appetizers. Nice. And we, you know, we'll, we'll yield. See, this is why we're friends. Yeah. Like, I like how you roll. <laughs> so, Jessica, we have just spent a great deal of time pouring over the menu, um, which sounds phenomenal. And we're very, very confused, which is par for the course for us. But we're really confused because we want everything. Like, we want just one of everything, but we're too young, somewhat trying to be skinny men. What is your favorite thing on the menu? My favorite is sautéed shrimp. However, everything on that menu is good, so it just depends on what you're in the mood for and what you like. Every Mm. appetizer is good. Every appetizer is good, but you think the sautéed shrimp is great. That's my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite. And I I can tell you've got a southern accent, so a shrimp, you're like a shrimp person, you're a shrimp aficionado. Am I a... Shrimp aficionado. Like, you, you know your shrimp. Yeah, I do. Well, I can't. I can't go against Jessica's recommendation. I'm like, I think we have to get the sautéed shrimp now, just because, unless you have some sort of shrimp allergy. No, I'm good. All right. Do you like so, mussels? Are you a muscle? No, I'm not a muscle guy. I am a sauce. You put in. You put anything with tomato sauce. I'll eat it. Right. They do a really nice job with. Well, you know, it's, it's uh, great mussels, and they, the sauce is phenomenal. It's a, it's a red sauce, but it's got a little kick. A little bite to it. And they're from Prince Edward Island, aren't they? Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. I only know that because Frank told me. All right, so what if we did the sautéed shrimp, um, the polenta, mm-hmm. Frank, the charcuterie? Charcuterie. I know it's French, and I failed French. I you took know, it three weeks. I knew Chevrolet <laughs> Coupe. And that was I can't it. tell you how long it took me to pronounce it properly, so don't... Feel bad. <laughs> all right, so all right, so we're going for the the last thing on the menu: the sautéed shrimp, the charcuterie, the crispy fried polenta, and pork belly. Pork belly. Well, you mentioned the meatballs. What do you like better? What's better, the pork belly or the meatballs? Both of them are good. I knew you were going to say that. Oh my god, I want it all. I just well, want the lamb. The lamb's excellent, but the pork belly is tasty. The pork belly sounds good with the jalapeno and the sweet onions. And all right, pork yep. belly. Yeah, pork belly. Kick it up and, and that's a, that's probably a good way to start. Is that a good? Okay, charcuterie, pork belly, pork belly, charcuterie, um, polenta. Polenta. And polenta. Okay, and now we would also like to order a beverage, uh, all in the name of research. Frank, I'll let you go first. I, I'm going to go with the Maker's Mark Manhattan. It's the uh, the Manhattan on the menu is made of Maker's Mark. Mm-hmm. Take it off that, and uh, some more water would be great. Uh, on the rocks or straight up? Straight up. Okay. Straight up. All right. So I want to I want to try some more. Expand my my 
horizons. What uh, what do you recommend in terms of a, a nice cocktail to complement our meal? I like martinis. I like Manhattans. I but all the specialty drinks are nice. I think you should want the Meisner. Yeah. The Meisner's cooler just because it's the signature. It's, brand, it's, the signature. it's brand new and today is the first day I've oh. served it oh. and it's very refreshing. Oh, well, um, that's it. You, you had me at hello, of course. Okay. You said first day, we've got to do it. Awesome, you're the best. It's Thank like, you. It's like rope drop for a signature cocktail. <laughs> Right, we are like the first ones to try the new uh, the new Meisner's cooler. She said it's refreshing, and it's look even though it's September, it's still like ninety eight degrees at, at ten o'clock at night. So I don't even know what Saint Germain is. Um, Nolitz gin, lime juice, simple syrup, soda water, and fresh mint, and it's twelve seventy five. And uh, as I said, the, the Manhattan's uh, Maker's Mark by the menu, twelve dollars, and uh, and like we said, all the drinks uh, are premium spirits. And the one thing that's nice is it comes with a free nap. So when we're done here, we'll just go into the lobby and just take a little nap. <laughs> and I'm looking at the menu going, does it really come with a free nap? I have a two-year-old. We do that every day. We come back, take a nap. <laughs> so Jessica just brought our cocktails. And you, before you even took a sip, you were impressed at your Manhattan. Yeah, it's in a chilled uh, martini glass. And it has two Luxardo cherries. And uh, it's served, served perfectly. I haven't tasted it yet, but the presentation and uh, everything's perfect. Yeah, I thought those were the same kind of cherries that they serve in one of my favorite drinks, which I've only had here, called the smoked turkey, which is a, a bourbon-based drink as well. Um, and I've got my, uh, my, my little, what is this Meisner's thing called? Cooler. My Meisner's Cooler. So cheers, my friend. Cheers. All in the name of research. <laughs> That's good. Nice and cold, very smooth. And a Manhattan's a tough drink nowadays to order because it's me and everybody else's uncle and grandfather that still orders them nowadays. So normally you go out, nobody knows what's in it. Uh, but it's, it's very, very well made. Mm. Oh, this is really, really, really good. And it's not sweet. And the good and dangerous part of it is that you really don't taste any alcohol in it. It is like a very ref- there's no come on Jessica there's no alcohol in this. You taste the the mint and the lime. Then the simple syrup. Probably. It's a yeah. So this on a nice hot summer night like this, even though it's fall now, um, this is good. You want to try that? You need a fancy hat. <laughs> a fancy hat. <laughs> Men can drink this too. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, it gets fresh mint. You can tell just by looking at it. It's, uh, it's It hasn't been sitting around all day. Very well prepared. I was happy that you were just describing your Manhattan as long as you did because it let me finish almost half of my, my thing. Yeah, this is really nice. This is a, But see, this, this to me, as I'm pointing toward drinks, this is the Grand Floridian, right? A nice sort of elegant drink and a cool cocktail and the sounds of... The, the band or the pianist in the lobby. Like, this is not a bad way to spend the evening. Yeah, you've kind of escaped the, the hustle and bustle of the park and everything, and you relax. And I feel like i got to raise a pinky while we drink it. Uh, but it's also not outrageous prices. If you go to a premium steakhouse, you'll probably pay more for a cocktail than we just paid on this menu. So they're about the 10 and $12 dollar range. Oh, we like your... Oh, hello. How's that? That's nice. That's a nice, that's a, that's a. That's quite a spread there. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. Eric came over and says, I have more food than you guys have table. <laughs> so we needed a bigger table. So Lou and I have our drinks and everything else on the window ledges. <laughs> And we have this small, I don't know, three-foot radius table just packed, you know, and we don't even have any uh, table, uh, any plates or utensils here either. So I'll, I'll take pictures. Um, I mean, it's dark, but hopefully they'll, they'll come out and I'll put them in the show notes. But before we even try anything, uh, obviously it smells great, but I am pleasantly surprised at the size of the portions. Like this charcuterie board is a full meal. Like I was expecting something half the size. No, and I think charcuterie is uh, French for heart attack. <laughs> it's, it's every cured pork uh, that you can think of. It's protein. It's protein, but it's well prepared. It's well presented. Um, and I think each portion, I would judge it as a three-person portion 
if you had this, this three pieces of the plant that is uh, three pieces of the pork. So everything's probably about three three person portion. But you can, as an, a normal person, could actually come here and order one or two of these things. And this is, I mean, it's clearly a full meal. Yeah, so three for each appetizer, and we've ordered four. Right. So we have food for 12 people here. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a bread plate with both olive and multigrain. Oh. So there's some something healthy on the plate. And right, and, and olives, and, as long as there's multigrains and some sort of fruit or vegetable, by definition, is that salt on the... It, so oh. I bet it's sea salt, I would guess. And there's two one-by-one-inch square slabs of butter doused in sea salt. Um, which I think sea salt is better for you than regular. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's the healthy salt. Yeah, so this is, this is all good. We're still on diets. There's something green uh, on that one plate. So. Which makes it salad. Yeah, so so. It's, it's great. All right, so you don't touch any. Wait, don't, you're touching. I'm opening I need, the bread. I'm opening the bread. I, I need to take pictures of this. Oh, my oh God, this smells so good, too. Yep. Oh, well, good. Yep. What a spread, you guys. Out of control, Jessica. Jessica, this is... This is Redonkulously. You may need to put some wheels on this chair, and then we'll be back over to the hotel room when we're done. I'll put you in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe we. I guess we could potentially use a second table. I'm somewhat embarrassed to say that, but. No. Let me do it. Let me at least help you. So have you got everything you need? Everything's good? I think this is a good start, Jessica. I think we're off to the races here. Oh, there you go. Now we're cooking with gas, brother. We need help. All right, so I think it makes sense to go with the hot stuff first. So maybe we shouldn't try this. She recommended the shrimp first, so I'm just going to grab some of this and very light, yeah. Yeah, very light. Um, they're small shrimp what do you say about quarter an inch with some cheese I think yeah the feta cheese um, oh and they're playing putting on the bridge too <laughs> background music right on cue um, very light not an overpowering taste very tender very good yeah, and what I like about this too, it's I've never had shrimp and feta cheese before. It's a really nice compliment. The other thing you can taste um, the cilantro, which it gives a little bit of freshness, but it's not overpowering. I know cilantro is not everybody's cup of tea, but it really works well. You've got the fresh tomatoes in there too, and you're right, it's not. Um, there's a creaminess to the sauce, but it's not overly heavy at all. Right, and there's no fishy or sea taste to it. It's a it's a very light kind of summery refreshing taste. I was kind of hoping you weren't going to like this. No, no, man. <laughs> this is because it's more for me. Mm. Oh, I would totally get this again. As I dig into more. And you know what? This, you, like, it's a, it's a smallish plate, but there's a lot in here. Like, this is full of shrimp. Yeah, there's a couple dozen shrimp in this thing. This I, I think I took too many shrimp. You can steal some from my, from my plate. <laughs> it's, it's all good. We have plenty of food, I think. We haven't even touched the heart attack plate yet. It's not, come on. I, was, <laughs> I always think the charcuterie board is the healthy part because it's just all protein. That, that was Christmas Eve at my house growing up, right? That was the, uh, the appetizer before the first of the seven courses uh, while you're sitting around watching football, right? I would say, look, we're both Italian. Like, this is what, as it's being cut up in the kitchen, everybody's just standing around the kitchen just talking and eating, and it never really even makes it out onto the plate. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, this is the thing where it just it reminds me, right, that's, that's Christmas, Thanksgiving, every holiday right there. Without the arguments. Mmm. <laughs> You know what, too? There's really thinly shaved garlic in here, too. Mm-hmm. 
I see why she recommended that so highly. No, no, no it's very good, very good, and it's, and it's light. So even if you had this as an appetizer before you were going to go to one of the restaurants, that wouldn't hurt your meal. That's that's really kind of a just something to stimulate the power. You know, that's actually a really good idea. So if you have a you know seven o'clock reservation at Citrico's and you want to come in here and have a cocktail, have your appetizers here. And then just get your main course at the restaurant. I think the great idea is you tell your wife, you know what, relax, take your time getting ready. I'm going to go out of the room, maybe walk around. You come here, have a little snack, a little cocktail, wait up. I think I got a plan that works here. Yeah, I like this a lot. Go ahead, finish that because I, I took more than my fair share. And if you don't, I'll because no, no shrimp should go to waste. So I would come back for that. Like you, I, you could have that as a pre-meal meal, appetizer. Oh yeah. It doesn't, it won't hurt your meal. And I mean, you could have that as a light dinner too. Like if you don't want to have like a big heavy plate, and what was it? You know, fifteen, sixteen dollars or so. And like you said, a lot of shrimp in there. Yeah, you know, and that's easy. Two or three people. Yeah. All right. So we made very quick work of that. Had that last little shrimp. The poor little, little, all right. Well, far be it from me to far be it from me to refuse. <laughs> Oh my god. Excellent, excellent. That is so good. I'm afraid that other things aren't gonna be as good as that. That's how good it was. I see why. Good. Alright, so now do you wanna go pork or do you wanna go polenta? Uh it's good. we gotta go for the pork. It, it's staring us down. The Berkshire pork, right? And, and it has a um, some sort of thinly sliced, thin pattern waffle chips. Potato chip type thing. Yeah, it looks. Uh... Oh my god! Even the potato chips. Are, oh, the potato chips are a little bit of the barbecue sauce on it. Well, let me try it. Here we go. Very good. I've never had chips like that anywhere on property before. Oh, they're very, very thin waffle cut. Like you'd see through the waffle cut, airy. Quite nice. All right, so let's uh, let's cut this pork up here. So first things first, I took a knife and fork to cut the pork, and you don't really even need the knife because the fork just the fork just falls apart. Yeah, it's it's that just semantics. It just breaks right apart. And it's falling apart right on right on the fork. <laughs> It's like smoked bacon, like but not fried bacon. It's like a a bait. It's the pork belly, right? It's but it's baked, so it's got that barbecuey. But the, you can tell where it comes from. And there's a nice sweetness to the barbecue sauce, and just a hint of the the jalapeno on the back end. Holy smokes, that's like super bacon right there. But there's no greasiness to it, and again, it's not. Um, it's not like a, a chewy, fatty kind of piece of pork shank either. That is so good. The next time I go to the petting zoo or Rafiki's Planet Watch, <laughs> I'm going to feel guilty. <laughs> I'm going to just feel guilty. Yeah, you can have that last piece because I ate so much shrimp, and I'm going to have another piece of this of the potato chip. And the barbecue sauce, you know, I live in Texas now. It's not a thick or overly tangy or sweet. It's got a very light flavor, so it's not masking the flavor of the pork. Yeah, that's a a really, really well-cooked piece of pork right there. I'm going to have no guilt about taking the third piece here. No, God, not at all. Because I'm just going to keep on dipping these healthy chips because they're made of potatoes, so they're by definition healthy so that's definitely an appetizer size the as opposed to the shrimp which i think could almost be a a small meal but that's really really good i thought of the pork nigiri that you can get at california grill like the pork nigiri sushi that rivals the quality of that pork up there and that's one of the best things i've ever eaten and it's soft but they've charred a little bit of the outside to give it a kind of a 
smoky, crunchy taste. But again, it's not like a barbecue. It's yeah. more of a, it's more of a baked, slow cooked flavor. I never met a pork shank I didn't like. All right, <laughs> so let's go with the polenta, which at first glance almost looks like a very fancy mozzarella stick, like a fried cheese stick, but we know that it's not. No, it, yeah, they're about, I don't know, what do you say, about an inch and a half, two inches long, maybe a quarter inch wide. Um, and they look good, though. I bet they're good. I'm, um, you know... Is it a finger food, or do I do we do we fancy it up and knife and fork? Right. Well, you know, <laughs> we've gone back now. This is three reviews. Oh yeah, these are nice. What's underneath? It's like a there's a that's the chickamauga uh, slaw. So I'll be I'll be a gentleman and use a fork and dip it in this little sauce here. Mm. You got me right as I'm chewing. I mean, that's got a very nice flavor to it. Yeah, so there's a, a Napa cabbage and chicken slaw and uh, harissa. But it's a, um, it's obviously a fried polenta, and it obviously doesn't have the stringiness of a cheese, but it does have the same type of crunch and, and texture as if you were to have, like, a, a mozzarella stick. It's a thin breading, though, so it's not like if you picture that thick breaded with a little bit of in the middle. It's a very thin breading, which is light, which is good. So I need to try the slaw just because it's here. Mm. Oh, yeah, there's some heat there. Yeah, there's an afterbite there. Yeah. yeah, that's good though. It's a warm slaw. I guess I wasn't expecting that. And then about two seconds after you swallowed it, you felt that kick or whatever it is. So I'm actually going to put some of the slaw on my next bite, like on top of it. But that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. So you get the creamy and the crunch, and you get the saltiness and a little bit of the heat. That's the way to do it. That's the, that's the combination right there. Yeah, that's nice. That, that, that is not what I expected with the little after bite there. It gets you going, and it's just, hello, let me in. But then you get in, and it's like, bam, there's the kick. It snuck in on you. Yeah, that's good. Oh, this is nice. Okay, as we prepare for our final course of the appetizer course, Frank, you're going to have a uh, another cocktail off the menu? Yeah, I'm going to stick with the classic cocktail section and go with the Rusty Nail, which is Drambuie and Johnny Walker Platinum for $18. And Jessica suggested that I have a sidecar. We're going, we're going classic. We're going classic elegance. Okay, uh, I've never had a sidecar, but why not? I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna like it. I'm gonna love it. I yeah, hope. Sideshow Lou, whatever her name was. Slip foot shoe, whatever. Now you have a sidecar. All right, so dude, let me tell you something. This, I am totally stoked about. Like. Again, I come from an Italian household where we would gather in the kitchen and eat this at Christmas time and holiday time and basically any other excuse. It is a uh, a large board full of a variety of cured meats and olives and that really nice, sharp, like Pecorino Romano cheese. I could do this all day, all night, and need nothing else. Absolutely. And there's... Pickles, which is an interesting twist, so I'm anxious to try that. Uh, but it looks phenomenal. And oh, by the way, um, I tasted the cherry in my Manhattan, and it's like candy. Yeah, it is just like candy. Yeah, it, they look like the ones in the one of my favorite drinks at Walt Disney World, which is the smoked turkey. Which unfortunately they don't have here. They don't have the ingredients for a smoked turkey here. So somewhat disappointed, but it lets me try a sidecar. So my friend, I'm going to let you dig in first because I would make very quick work of this. I'm going to try pepperoni first, right? That's good. It does not have a uh, thick skin on it. You know, sometimes bad pepperoni has a thick skin or it has no skin and it's packaged. It's very good. All right, I'm going to go a little uh, super sod. Oh, God. Like, this is what I miss in Florida. There is no good Italian deli where you can go and get fresh meat and, like, fresh, like, mozzarella in the water. So this is, like, a little taste of home for me. There's no pork store. 
That's no. what you need at Park Star. And you know, the New York area, it's all, New York is only one of four cities in America where you don't have to filter the water. And, and that's what makes the pizza and the bagels so good. Brother, you're, you're speaking my language. I say that all the time. Vianopoli is good pizza, but it's not Northeast pizza and at all. you have to mess with the water, right, to get it right, which I give them credit to do. They try to add minerals and things like that, but they're making... I love I love my Publix, but they don't know what a bagel is. Like, and you say, what, what you ask for a Bialy around here, and they look at you funny. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> they want a slice of pizza, and they're like, oh, frozen food aisle. Yeah. So, yeah, that's nice. That's a, a little taste of home. I gotta have a little bit of this cheese, man. Try cheese. And they're nice sized cubes. I mean, they're not small portions. That's good. It's creamy, it's sharp, it's salty. Oh, God. This, with a nice glass of red wine, good night, nurse. Yeah, nice Chianti. Yeah, yeah it'd be perfect, yeah. <laughs> so there's also a. Um, a Spanish chorizo sausage on here. Mm. And it's a dry chorizo, which is, um, it's got like almost a salami texture, but a nice little kick to it. Right, and as, right, as it starts to sort of sit on the tongue, right, you get a little bit of the heat that sort of remains after. Oh, man. There's dates. There's... Prosciutto and brajol. Oh my god! So, olives. believe it or not, I'm not an olive guy. Really? Yeah. And I like the real, like Sicilian olives that are in the, the oil with the onion and everything. And that's what I grew up having. So let's try these. These look more like martini olives. They still have a little stem on them. They still have pits. Yeah, and I, you know what? That chorizo, the heat is still sitting there a little bit, which I really, really like. Now, if they had artichoke carts on here, forget it. I would be here all night long. The, the olives are okay. Um, if you're if you're not from the Northeast, you'll probably think they're you know they're they're kind of your run of mill outside of New York olive. So there's, there's still the uh, prosciutto, the supersan, the capa, the brajol, a little bit of salami left, the dates, the almonds. Oh yeah, so look at the almonds in the middle too. Mark, I've never had a Marcona almond until right now. Hmm. So that's really interesting. It sort of breaks it up, obviously, not just textually, but it's very, very, very salty, which fits right in with the rest of the salted and cured meat. Yeah, that'll be great for my blood pressure. <laughs> Why you got to ruin it, man? Why you got to bring me down? Don't talk about things like blood pressure. I... My wife is in the next hotel room, right? She's right down the hall. Let's try the, let's try the almonds. That yeah, is very tasty. Yeah. It's, it is salted. Nice little taste to it. So I didn't have that. And now try one of the bread and butter pickles. Did you try one? Right? Yeah, I just try one. It's a, just use your fingers. We're all friends here. They're good. They're a dry pickle. They're not like overly um, buttery. Yeah. So did you have this already? Did you try this? We did it. you. Mm. So this is a, um, it's a darker, smokier, kind of drier meat. Oh, that with the Pecorino Romano cheese, a little chaser. Yeah, and you know, they fool you with this French name uh, for Italian pork. And uh, it's great. This is, this, is a, this, is, this is a great, great appetizer. And it's $16, and there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of food on here. I mean, there's a lot of shareable food. Yeah, I would, uh, I would come back, order this, a bottle of Chianti, enjoy the music, and I could probably go to bed right after that. And they've got the bread. Like, we could be taking the bread and doing the whole bread with the meat. Oh, so, all right. So, you know what? So, there's an Forget olive the dog. bread and a multigrain bread. So don't choose the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, so I don't want to go with that multigrain nonsense. Oh, plus the salted butter, too. I'm gonna, that's going to be the olive That's going to be the olive bread? All right. Thank you very much.
much. Oh, that bread's nice. And try that oh, with the salt and butter. Come on, man. Well, the cocktails came just as you were eating the bread, so I got a little distracted. It was like squirrel cocktails. Um, so let's try the bread. Definitely save the bread for last because you could easily fill up on the bread and be done with the rest of the meal. Yeah, and that's the, the salt is, uh, the, the butter is really like, it's it's creamy and it's sweet. And they get the little crunch of the sea salt. And now you have a little bit of the chorizo sausage. Oh, yeah. And its texture of the bread is very uh, open. It's not a dense bread, so it's very airy and open. And it has a just a very firm crust, but not a overly crunchy toast crust. I wish people could see that I'm sitting here with this big smile on my face. Like, I'm a simple person. A good meal with friends like this, these are the things that make me smile. Very magical, to use an over- <laughs> overused term. But um, this, this is... I forgot we were in Disney World about 14 minutes ago. And I thought we were at, you know, a, a nice restaurant somewhere in the middle of, you know, give me in Chicago or New York very easily. That's a really good point. You know, we people think of Disney World and people say, ah, I don't want to go to Disney. It's all Cinderella and Dumbo and kids screaming and Mickey Mouse. And this is the farthest thing from it. Yeah, I'm... I could draw a hidden Mickey into the butter to make everybody feel better, but I've completely forgot where we are. And to see you dancing to Pennsylvania 65000 was really a nice touch for me. That's a blast with that. Um, so I have the rusty nail. It serves um, in a rocks glass on the rocks. And it's very smooth, very smooth. It's a right amount of ice, and it's a full drink. I mean, mm. oh, the sidecar is nice. Why have I never had this before? It's got a, a sugared rim. I don't even know what's in it, but it's really good. I, I think we're in the 30s again. We should have, uh, you know, hats and tuxedos on for this meal. Hey, man, I, um, you know what? I think there is something, and that's what's nice about the Grand Floridian. I think that we forget sometimes... The, the simple pleasure of getting dressed for dinner and going and having a nice, elegant meal with music in the background. like And that's exactly what this is. Granted, you know, we're two men here without our wives doing this together, but it's all in the name of research. But I could totally get used to this. Uh, this is great. And actually, the first Disney-esque thing came on with the band right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Wish Upon a Star. Uh, but other than that, you know, I've escaped into the 40s, and it's, we could be uh, Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin having a uh, pre-concert meal right here. Oh, this is good, yeah. And there's still there's still a lot more. We're, we're, we have not stopped eating since we've sat down, and there's still a lot of food left. You're so dainty and delicate. You're still using a knife and fork, and now I'm just using my fingers. And... Oh, yeah. And the meats aren't overly oily. You know, if you buy cheaper meats, there's a lot of oils in them or a thicker skin, and they're overstuffed with filler. This is not. This, this, this is, some, you know, better end. And it's, you know, like that is sliced perfectly thin the way it's supposed to be. Like, you can almost see through it, so it's not chewy at all. It's not... It, Oh, but the, the little bit of the, the marbleizing of the fats in the meat. Oh. And, and it's a relatively lean cut. It isn't yeah. a fattier cut, so it's just enough fat to give it the flavor. Right, but not stringy. But you're not eating yeah. a piece of lard, right? You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although, not there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> not, it's just not, I mean, absolutely. But th- this is a good mixture. This is, this is definitely, um, this is probably better than what I grew up eating. So. Yeah, this is nice. And, there's a, and you know what, too? There was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven different items on the charcuterie board to sample. Yeah, and I would say this would, if you were just coming for a snack, this yeah, is four or it. five people I'll easy. Yep. Yeah, this isn't a, this goes beyond the two to three people of the other app. I think you're right. I think this is, if you want to come here with a group and sample and share and just talk and have some drinks, this is what you order. This is great. I mean, this is, and you know what? You're going to walk it off in the park. You just got to forget it. Um, but this is the stuff my wife won't let me eat. So this is, thanks, Lou, for bringing me out. This is great. I'm going to tell her we had, uh, you know, baked chicken and vegetables. And I'm not Tell her it was awful and you did it for the children. Yeah, this one's not going on her iPod. <laughs> no, 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 no. And as you say that, I stuffed my face with more cured meats. So, Jessica, we are still... 
believe it or not, because I'm a fast eater, like I'm in prison, like I hover over my food and I inhale it before somebody takes it, we're still, and this is the beauty of what I love about coming here, we are still chatting and sampling. There's still a lot of food left on our charcuterie board. That being said, I think it would, would behoove us to try at least one of the four desserts you have. You have a lemon-scented cheesecake with white chocolate ganache for $10, a warm chocolate banana tort with a handcrafted Belgian chocolate crown and some other French word at $12, a seasonal berry gratin for $10, and a tropical fruit creme brulee with mango and assorted berries. Do you have a favorite? You're going to say they're all good, aren't you? Did they take the tiramisu off? Is it gone? They did. Yeah. Okay. I like the cheesecake. I like the berries gratin. But, yes, they all are good. Those are my two favorites. Yeah, I'm voting Frank, what's cheesecake. I'm voting cheesecake. Yeah, and it's lemon-scented, so which means it has a hint of lemon, which is fruit, which, of course, makes it healthy. So it's milk and lemon. It's le- We'll have a lemon-scented cheesecake, please. Frank, I can tell you something. We pretty much have been. I could sit here all night and do this. We've I been think, recording, I think but we've done it all night. It's right. like, we've, we've turned the recorder off, and we've, you know, like this is exactly where it's about. Like we're sitting here, we're just sort of picking at the cheese, we're picking at some of the olives and the meat and things like that, and we're just chatting over drinks. Like that is what this experience is all about. And I, and I want to tell everybody out there. I was talking to people at the Dallas meet, and they were like, "Oh, you're on the show. What's Lou really like?" And I'm like. Lou's really like what you think he's like. <laughs> he's a real first, and he does this from the heart. And it's just so easy. We've turned off the recorder. We've had our drinks and eaten and just talked about, you know, different topics. And, and he, he's just a great guy. So for everybody out there wonders what he's really like, I don't know, what are you, 300 and something episodes into this? That's exactly what he's like. Oh, well, thank you. That's very nice. And, uh, you know, this is the beauty of this, too, is being able to sit here with a friend and we met through the show right we met through auctions and things like that and that's we were just talking before him it's been the greatest blessing of doing the show for so many years is, is the friendships that I've been able to make and, and friendships that I've seen arise out of meets of the month and cruises and events like Dallas and things like that yeah, and you always have something in common so a couple of us came to the Dallas meet a little early, and I'm walking around, and I'm like, hey, are you here for WDW Radio? They're like, yeah, let's, let's go, go, to, go to the bar, have a drink. We start talking, and uh, so Kathy from Special Mouse sat with her, and Craig, and I don't remember his last name, I apologize, but he drove up from Austin, and he also treached into the mud to see you, and, and, and you're always talking about what, what resorts have you stayed at, and what have you done here, and, and you know, people are like, oh, I heard you on the show, and it, it's just great people. You have something that's in, in common, and it's something that's really the heart of people's families, right? Their families have rotated around Disney, whether it was the wonderful world of color, or it was going to the parks every year, like we grew up doing, okay. so. Thank you very much. It's a uh, it's an amazing community that you guys, you the listener, have built uh, around. Yes, it, it stems from this this love of Disney first and foremost, but um, it's a, been this incredible community that has been built around it, and it's been a huge blessing for me. Uh, we were saying before offline, it's sort of the greatest um, the greatest benefit of doing all this is not just being able to share my love for Disney, but being able to sort of see this community grow and friendships develop. Yeah, and we were talking, my, my son's 22 months now, and Lou and I were walking through the park with my very pregnant wife. And that seems like only, only yesterday, and she put up with us talking about every uh, brick and non-brick in the park. And uh, But my son's screaming, monorail, monorail, and having to ride it over and over again. I would have rode that monorail all day long, so it's just great. Oh, here's our cheesecake. Hi, how are you? You I... could put it right here. Yeah, let's move my menu out of the way. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Enjoy. It, it's not a cheesecake. It's like a shark. It's a, <laughs> it has a shark fin cookie down the middle with three strawberries and a, I'm guessing a strawberry and maybe orange ganache through it. That looks phenomenal. So it's almost like the size of a baseball cut in half um, on a plate of a drizzle, like you said, of some sort of berry and orange. And it, it looked like originally like an upside down ice cream cone because there is this uh, I assume this is a some sort of a sugar 
You're right. It's a sugar, a sugar shark fin. A shark fin. <laughs> what was that Carvel cake with the nose with the you know, Fudgy the Whale? Fudgy the whale. <laughs> you know, I'm Tom Carvel. And for Father's Day, get Fudgy the Whale. See, only people from the Northeast are going to get the, the, the Tom Carvel Fudgy the Whale thing. But um, I'm only sorry that I didn't order a nice cup of coffee to go along with this. But that being said, I think we should dig in anyway. Regrets, I've had a few. Too few to mention. <laughs> Mm. That's very tasty. Very tasty. There's a little scent of lemon. I see why they call it a lemon scented cheesecake. It's like fresh laundry. It's just <laughs> fresh laundry. <laughs> it's like that, that add on the line, you know, downy freshness to it. And it's um, the, the, the drizzle is great. I'm smothering it in the drizzle and it's giving us great flavor. It tastes like springtime. It literally tastes like springtime. You get that. Um, that nice citrus of the lemon, but it's not a very bitter kind of thing, and it's, it's a really nice complement to the the creaminess and the milkiness of the cheesecake. I could eat, I could eat all of this. Two, two of them. <laughs> That's what I was saying. I could eat two. I'm like, who and I are about to have that prison fight over this cheesecake? <laughs> I'm not normally a big dessert guy, but. Mm. Yeah. So we were talking before about. The taste of New York and New Jersey down here in Florida. This is a very non-traditional type of cheesecake, but it still has that same type of density and the same type of texture that we're used to. It doesn't have the density of a Junior's cheesecake. If I'm, you know, for those of you in the Northeast, know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a little airier, a little lighter. I probably said airier a couple of times, but I think that's been the consistency of the appetizers here. Is that I don't think they were designed to be filling. They were probably designed to be. I'm waiting for my, you know, reservation in Arcusi. Probably not waiting for Victoria and Albert's because that's an experience on its own. But this is this is all very light, and it's, uh, you know, pre-meal meal, but we've ordered enough for 14 people, so we've yeah. made a meal out of it. And to be clear, like a Junior's cheesecake weighs like 27 pounds. Like, that's a normal-sized cheesecake. Yeah, and this is probably 2.7 <laughs> ounces. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, like I'm eating this, and... Uh, not all right. I feel a little bit. Of, we were talking about sort of wasted calories before. I don't feel guilt because our wives aren't here, but I don't feel guilt because it is very, very light. No, I'll feel the guilt. My wife isn't here when I get it back to the hotel room. That's what I'll feel. But this is this is good. Very very tasty. I enjoy it, and I like the the, the little bit of a, a citrus there because it really does cut the the heaviness of a, you know potential heaviness of a cheesecake. I do feel like I have to have a fancy hat on. I need a fedora and a tux. So that's the recurring theme. Like, you come to Meisner's Lounge and you feel like you want to have a fancy hat. I, on the opposite side, I don't feel like I need to have a fancy hat. I feel like this is a much more elegant type of environment, yet it's very, very accessible. Look, there are people here in baseball hats and shorts and flip-flops, and nobody's out of place, right? Nobody's underdressed in Meisner's Lounge. And if you wore your fancy little hat, you wouldn't be overdressed either. Yeah, it's not the Palo experience on the cruise ship or Victorian Alberts. You can come as you are. And uh, you know, Jessica, our waitress, has been great and very welcoming. Uh, but you could kind of transport yourself into kind of a nice area. But So, so Lou, Mr. Disney Trivia, we haven't talked about the elephant in the room yet. Um... <laughs> the fact that I left a piece of pecorino. I'm going to finish the cheese. Don't. That's not the bread. Is it the bread? Yeah, but so, you know, being one of the quote unquote box people, I'd be in my car right now going, Lou, when are you going to tell me why it's called Meisner's Lounge? When? When, Lou? I'm going to tell you right now, of course. But I am sure by asking me that you already knew the answer. You never ask a question. You don't already know the answers. <laughs> You're a very good attorney. Yeah, so, so, you know, when have you stopped, you know, the leading the witness, um, Addison Meisner, right? The architect. He was born in California, and I Googled all of this because <laughs> I was like, I'm going to Meisner's Lounge. Uh, so if the Google's correct, it's uh, Meisner, the, the architect. But he built country houses in Long Island and developed Boca Raton and went bankrupt. So <laughs> <laughs> And went bankrupt? Yeah. <laughs> So the Ritz Carlton bought him out, and all these people they bought out his uh, they bought out his whole company for seventy thousand dollars and four million dollars of debt. Wow. 
and uh, he didn't really make a lot of money, but he designed a lot of cool stuff, which I'm reading this going, well, this doesn't make sense because the Grand Floridians after the Hotel Del Coronado in California. But he had a, obviously there was a Florida connection to, like like Narcusi, there's a Florida connection. He developed Boca Raton, and he, that was his Florida connection, and he died bang. Look at you bringing the knowledge. Bring in the, I am bringing the Pecorino Romano, and you're bringing the knowledge. But, you know, when you go toe-to-toe with Lou Mangiello, it's like cramming for the LSATs or the GMAT. You're like, you know, Meisner's Lounge is to the blank as Narcusi's is to the Indian tribe. You know, what is it? Dude, the, the important toe-to-toe is how well we did on the food because there's, you know, there's not much carnage left after ordering food, like you said, for potentially 12 normal-sized human beings. What's left are the three pieces of multigrain bread. Don't, don't count the bread yet because I'm not done because I told her to leave the salted butter. Yeah, but both of us declared the multigrain remotely healthy. Yeah, that, that's a waste of that's a waste of space right there. We wrote that one off. Say that's not even food. That's a coaster. I'm gonna wait for it to dry out. <laughs> We're not eating that. So all right, let's sort of recap. Um, we ordered four or five things off the the nine thing menu. Go through it and tell me which were your favorites and, and why, and which are the things that you would come back and order again. Um, the Berkshire pork belly. You know, it, it, that that to me was great. I mean, it had, it was just this soft, buttery piece of pork that I don't even want to think of Rafiki's Planet Watch. I wish that you could see the hand gestures that Frank is making as he's doing it. He's like cuddling the pork. <laughs> I, I, it's so scrumptious, my precious. <laughs> and um, it, it, if I sit on my hands, I won't be able to record anything. Um, I thought that was great. And it, the barbecue sauce, I give them credit because you can have bad barbecue where they yeah. just they bury it in barbecue sauce and hide the flavor of the meat or you have not enough of a flavor. And it was just like an accent. It almost like kept it moist. It was like just a nice warm, wet towel <laughs> over the pork. <laughs> it was great. Um, the shrimp was good. I would, yeah. I would give the shrimp number two. I, I would go to the meat and cheese tray, probably third, but I'll say that with an asterisk of saying if I was coming here for a free meal, I would just order that and a bottle of wine and socialize and talk and then go have dinner. Yeah. And we ordered a bunch of other stuff. But we ordered the polenta. <laughs> I just food coma was kicked in. Uh, the polenta was probably last on my list. I don't know if we're going to agree with that one. Uh, but the, the food was good. And the cheesecake, I liked the cheesecake because I didn't feel it had that juniors, which I love. But you have to eat a slither of juniors or you can eat like a softball sized piece of this cheesecake and probably have the same effect. So I'm with you. And I think what you order should depend on why you're coming here, right? If you're coming here with friends or if you are a couple and want to just share a, a plate of something over a glass or six of wine, the charcuterie plate is f- we, this doesn't happen often, Frank. We didn't finish it, and it's not because we're full. Because there's a lot of food there. There's what did we say there was there was eleven different items on there, well worth every penny. We really enjoyed it. I, I we I still need to have the date just to sort of finish it off. So if you are coming here to share something and just have maybe a, a late night glass of wine or a cocktail or a, a coffee, even the charcuterie plate is far and away what I would order first. If you're coming here to get something a little bit more substantial, I would probably go with the shrimp first, followed closely, very, very closely behind by the pork. Uh, I would probably put polenta third on that list, and I think we need to come back to try the meatballs and the bolognese and some of the other items on the menu. But I think what we're seeing is that there is a selection of items for a pre-meal appetizer or even a full meal. If you want to just have, you know, something maybe a little bit lighter as opposed to a large meal, you can order one of these things and a drink and a dessert, and that's a full meal without a doubt. Obviously, items that you are not going to find anywhere else in Walt Disney World, and I think you really hit the nail on the head, and I didn't think about this until you said it, that the whole time we were here, we forgot that we were in Walt Disney World. We were so far removed from Cinderella Castle and the electrical water pageant and parades and shows and kids. We had such a nice adult meal and time in here. And look, we've seen a lot of turnover in terms of tables 
there's been couples, there's been groups of guys, there's been groups of girls, groups of friends coming in and out, doing exactly what it is that we are doing. And um, maybe Meisner's is all of a sudden, I know, I'm like, it's like my favorite child. It, maybe this has now just jumped to the top of the list of my favorite lounges. That, that's, and I'm glad to experience that with you. Uh, everybody here that's come has been in shorts and T-shirts and casual. So we're describing, I think, an eloquent meal or appetizers not reflective of the ambiance. It's come as you are, come straight out of the park, come in your park attire. But if you had a big lunch you know, in the park or an early, you know, hey, I went and had my big meal at the park at 4 o'clock dinner, and now it's 8 o'clock and I've walked 4 miles in the park... This is a great, great way to end the meal. A great, a great way to end the day. I think. Yeah, I think that's it. It's a, it's a really nice way to end the day, especially if you're staying here and then you can sort of waddle your way back to to your room. Because uh, I was really, really impressed again with the food. The service is in typical Disney fashion. It is exceptional. We had a great server. Um, yeah, I, I would come back to try some of the other items again, and I can see myself recommending this place as where I would want to come back again with friends. Yeah, and, you know, to describe the ambiance, if you haven't been here, we could look out into the lobby and see the chandelier, kind of the full lit uh, lobby, and it's probably 80% darker here in Meisner's Lounge. It's candlelit uh, at the table, so it's a little bit quiet. We look out into the window and see the courtyard or parts of the pool. So it's, you know, it's a big diversion, and you're almost blocked off from the rest of the Grand Floridian. It's almost like that invisible wall is there. And it's a small, it's a relatively small lounge, too. Maybe there's 10, 12 tables tops. I'm guessing at 800 square feet, maybe, maybe. Uh, and there's a kind of a half-circle bar in the middle with two TVs and uh, some kind of music thing going on there. But there's a one waitress, one bartender, just to give you an idea. It's, you know, it's very intimate. And having the Grand Floridian Society Orchestra playing in the background. Now, again, it, it's late at night when we're recording. It's almost 11 o'clock. We've been here for, for a very, very long time. There's been no rush to get us out. We have not felt pressured to sort of turn this table over. We listened to the pianist. We listened to the orchestra. We were engaging with our waitress. Like, this is a really, really nice evening, which... You know, we, we sort of talk about uh, Walt Disney World as being this vacation kingdom of the world, especially when it first opened. And that's just, that's sort of the feel that I get from this lounge. Like, this is like a nice resort vacation spot to, to spend and wind down the evening with friends. You know, and if, if you're coming without kids, this may be a great place for a couple. I'm here with my family, but it's, you know what, it's a good place to maybe unwind from the, the wind-up of the day. Um, but it's very casual, very adult-oriented. I hate to say, from Disney World, probably not a place you want to bring your toddler, maybe your older kid. We saw some kids probably 8 to 14 years old. Earlier in the night. Right? Yeah, yeah earlier in the night. Uh, late at night, it looks like they're all adults. Um, but this place is great. V- very nice. Yeah, I'm very, very impressed. Again, I've been, in, I've been here before just having cocktails and wine with friends, but having sampled the menu and being really, really impressed at, at the quality and the quantity of food, too. When I saw prices of $16, $17 for an appetizer, I was curious as to see what was the value going to be. In terms of value, how did you feel? Because I, I felt you certainly got a lot for your dollar. So, you know, value, you're spending $10 for a cheeseburger, right, in the park. And uh, you're in that price range still. And Lou's still eating, by the way. I'm talking. <laughs> so Lou's like, oh, you know, Frank has the mic. I'm going <laughs> to slip a couple of these uh, nuts and cheese in my mouth, which I'll probably do when Lou starts talking. Don't get me wrong. Um, but from a value standpoint, I would equate this, and you know, Lou knows I travel a lot, if you're in a hotel of a, of a Waldorf Astoria or a W or any kind of metropolitan hotel lobby bar, um, that's, that's kind of the food and ambiance you could expect, probably with half the people, so it makes it even more intimate. Yeah, I like this a lot. Uh, I will be back. I will be sampling some of the other items on the menu, uh, certainly, and, and talk about this as well. Listen, if you've ever been to Meisner's Lounge, please come to the show notes over at wdwradio.com click on this week's podcast give me your thoughts on the lounge the ambiance the decor the drinks the food whatever it might be and if you haven't been before i highly recommend that you go by yourself with a friend with a group of friends whoever it may be and give it a try i think you'll be very very pleasantly surprised frank thank you again so much um i, I had 
as always, a, a delightful evening with you. We've now done, I think, what, breakfast, lunch, and <laughs> dinner together. Uh, this may have been the most enjoyable of all because of where we are and the food we've enjoyed and the ability to sort of sit and chat and catch up for a while. Thank you again for your contributions to the Dream Team Project. You have uh, made a difference in the lives of those children. You've also made a difference in the waistline of Lou Mangiello. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to pay for this in the morning. Uh, well, Lou, thanks for having me again. Thanks for all you do for Make-A-Wish. It's a wonderful charity. Raising a quarter million dollars is something very, very few people in the world can even say. And that speaks a lot. A big testament to your heart and where you kind of channel that energy in, in this social media craze you've created with WDW Radio. And to everybody else listening... Uh, Lou's a great guy, and I'm going to thank him on your behalf, on behalf of all the box people. And if you have a chance to meet him, we were interrupted. Uh, and I interrupted, I use that word, it's incorrected, but you know, people stopped us and said, Hey, Lou Manjo, could I have a picture? And we stopped recording, and Lou took a picture, and you know, I took it for him. And it was great. He's a very personal guy. So uh, unlike other people at work, feel free to stop Lou at work, and he'll give you a hug and a handshake. Awesome. Thank you, brother, man. This has been awesome. We've got to do this again. Absolutely. Can't wait to do it. And you're right, I'm not done. I told you to leave the bread and the butter and the cheese and the dates. Yeah, you know, th- th- there are some more things on the menu. <laughs> the night is still young. No, listen, nothing is going to go to waste. Remember you as a kid, your parents told you about the starving children in Africa and China? Well, you can't... It's, it's actually disrespectful to your host to leave any plate. You know, if you come from an Italian household, if you, you insult me, you, you will insult the host if you leave food on a plate. So oh we don't want to insult, you know, Walt Disney and his lineage. That's right. well, I'm going to give you the, Ita- ca- the Italian Catholic guilt right here. So you need to, uh, young man, you are not getting up from this table until you finish everything on your plate. And Tangled has nothing on the guilt. They wouldn't do. And nobody else gives me. If you have faults, I love you still. It had to be you, wonderful you. It had to be you. It just had to be wonderful It's time for our Walt Disney World Trivia Question of the Week, where I invite you to test your knowledge of Walt Disney World history or see how well you pay attention to the details in what you see or maybe even in what you hear. You can then enter for a chance to win a Disney prize package. Before we get to this week's question, let's go back, review last week's, and select our winner. So last week, I was getting ready for our Twilight at the Tower event over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, so I wanted to ask you a question from that park specifically about Toy Story Midway Mania. And your question was pretty simple. All you had to do was tell me what object, what is it that you were shooting at when you were in the alien scene? And obviously it's a ring toss game and your answer simply was rings. And congratulations and thanks to the hundreds of you, almost a thousand of you entered last week, got this one correct. Knew, of course, that you shoot rings because it's a ring toss game at the aliens in that scene of Toy Story Midway Mania. Congratulations to everybody who entered. I randomly selected one of the entries for a prize package that includes all six of my virtual audio walking tours of the Magic Kingdom, a copy of my 102 Ways to Save Money for an at Walt Disney World book, and a mystery Halloween vinylmation. And last week's winner is... Maria Gardner. So, Maria, congratulations. Please send me your address. I'll get your package out to you right away. If you played last week and didn't win, that's okay, because here's your next chance to enter in this week's Walt Disney World Trivia Challenge. So, as part of my day's activities for our Twilight at the Tower event, I gave two tours of Sunset Boulevard in the morning, about 90-minute tours of Sunset Boulevard in the morning, and we did a scavenger hunt later in the afternoon, so that made me think of this week's trivia challenge question. So as you probably know, Sunset Boulevard was not always there. It was not part of the original opening of the Disney MGM Studios. And in fact, where Sunset Boulevard sits today was the original Theater of the Stars. And a number of different shows played at that theater until it was closed to make way for Sunset Boulevard and then reopen again where Beauty and the Beast live on stage currently plays. But at the original theater, a stage show was presented based on characters from what live-action Disney film. 
That's your question for this week. Tell me the name of the film that the live action show was performed at at the original Theater of the Stars at Disney's Hollywood Studios. You have until Sunday, October 19th at 11.59 p.m. to email your answer to contest at wdwradio.com. This week you're playing for all six of my virtual audio walking tours of the Magic Kingdom, a copy of 102 Ways to Save Money for and at Walt Disney World, and a mystery Disney pin. So good luck and have fun. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you so very much for taking the time to tune in this and every week. I can't tell you how much I really do appreciate it. I also want to give quick thanks to everybody who's gone over to Amazon.com and rated and reviewed my new book, 102 Ways to Save Money for and at Walt Disney World. We have nearly 150 reviews so far, so if you have the book and enjoy it, please visit Amazon.com. Even if you didn't purchase it from there, you can leave a rating and review. Also, don't forget that if you do buy a print version of the book from Amazon or you purchased one in the past, you can still get the Kindle edition for just $2.99. Again, the print edition has to have been sold by Amazon. To learn more, to buy the book as a PDF, print, iBook, Nook, Kobo, whatever platform you like, go ahead and visit and let your friends know about Disney102.com. Also, don't forget that in addition to the podcast, which you can find and subscribe to over on iTunes, please come by every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern for WDWRadioLive.com. It's a live video broadcast and chat where you could be part of the conversation by logging into the chat room. I'll discuss the weekly Walt Disney World news, interact with you in the chat room for conversation and questions and answers, and then we'll stay chat casually for about an hour or so. Again, that's Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern at WDWRadioLive.com. Also, visit WDWRadio.com for multiple daily blog posts and contests and photos. Lots more. You can submit submit your photos for our Self Shot Tuesdays. If you have a selfie from the park, just send it to photos at WDWRadio.com. You can also find links to our YouTube channel. You can subscribe over at YouTube.com slash WDW Radio. We also have a newsletter, discussion forums, mobile app, and so much more. Again, that's over at WDWRadio.com. I'd love to hear from you. So if you have a question you want answered on the show, you can email me, Lou at WDWRadio.com, or call the voicemail at 407 900 9391. Be heard on the air. You can also find a Leave Lou a voicemail button right on every page over at www.radio.com. All you need is your computer microphone. You can call in and leave a voicemail with a question, a comment, or just a hello from the parks. Please follow me over on Twitter. I am at Lou Mangiello. And hey, do me a favor. Tweet me when you're listening to the show. Let me know that you're listening. We'd love to hear from you and uh, engage with you over on Twitter. Um, Facebook.com slash Lou Mangiello is my personal profile. You can follow me there. And Facebook.com slash Radio is where you can like the WDW Radio fan page. And as lo- as much as I love connecting with you guys online and having conversations there, I believe that nothing beats a handshake and a hug, which is why I've been doing monthly meetups in Walt Disney World since January of 2008. And we actually have two meetups on both coasts in November. The first is going to be on Saturday, November 8th. It is still during Food and Wine Festival. The Wine and Dine Half Marathon is at 10 o'clock that night, so I thought we would do a meetup early in the day, probably about 11.30 a.m. Might as well go over to World Showcase because food and wine, these are a few of my favorite things. So let's meet over at La Cantina, the outdoor seating area of the counter service restaurant over at the Mexico Pavilion. There's food, lots of seating, and it's covered just in case of bad weather. Visit the events page over at www.radio.com for more information and how you can RSVP on our Facebook event page as well. Also, I will be out in Disneyland for the Avengers Half Marathon, so we obviously have to have a meetup while we're out there as well. We'll do one the week right after, Saturday, November 15th. That's the day of the 5K at like 5.30 in the morning. So I figured by 11.30, you'll be showered, you'll be rested, and of course you'll be hungry. So we're going to meet up over at the Cozy Cone Motel at Disney California Adventure, 11.30 a.m. Again, that's Saturday, November 15th. Because, look, food tastes better when it's in a cone and much better when you share it with friends. Lots more meetups and events planned as well. 
By visiting the event page, you can find out everything that's coming up, not just in Walt Disney World, but other events on the road as well. Plus, if you visit lumangelo.com, you can find some other places that I'll be speaking, including conferences and schools and to businesses. And if there's some way that I can help you or your school or your business, you can learn more and contact me right from there. Quick thanks to Mouse Fan Travel. They are my official recommended travel provider because it's who I've used for like eight years so far. Whether you're coming to World or Land or Cruise Line or anywhere that Disney can take you or basically anywhere around the world, they will help you get the best possible prices, all available discounts, a free no-obligation quote. More importantly, if you book with them for your Disney vacation, it's at no cost to you at all. Again, visit mousefantravel.com for more information. And to get some Disney magic delivered right to your door, visit celebrationspress.com. And as always, my friends, and you are my friends, whether we have met yet or not, I promise you that. If you like the show, all I ask is that you please help spread the word. Let others know about it. Tweet out when you're listening. Share a link to your favorite show or this episode over on Facebook and comment there. And please come by, rate and review the show in iTunes. We have almost 900 reviews. Would love to get to 1,000 five-star reviews if possible. So thank you to Tink Inc. and Lori D777 and Citrus Swirler and everybody else who has left a review recently. And finally, and once again, most importantly, I cannot tell you how grateful I am to you for taking the time to tune in every week and to send me tweets and emails and come out to me to the month. It means more to me than, than you know because because of you, I am able to share my love of Disney with you in so many different ways, and I am incredibly grateful for that. And I want you to do the same thing. I want you to get up every day excited about what you do and do what you love because life is just too short. But remember, it doesn't happen overnight, right? You don't become successful overnight. You gotta build your dreams one block and one day at a time. Have faith and always keep moving forward. And hey, if there's some way that I can help you, Please let me know. I will do what I can. Thank you all so, so very much for tuning in. I hope you have an amazing week this week. So until next time, see ya. Hey, Lou, it's Chris from West Palm Beach. Uh, mixed team in the box. Um, just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, not heads up. I'm just saying uh, this week, uh, really enjoyed the uh, Tower of, uh, you know, Twilight at the Tower uh, meet and greet. Um, I didn't, I wasn't there for the um, the marathon the following day, but um, the meet and greet was wonderful. Good time. Um, met some great people. You're a great guy. You got a great family, um, and a lot of great people around you. I wish I could make, could have made the uh, um, uh, the tours earlier in the day, but anyway. Um, just wishing you the best and everybody else out there. And uh, talk to you soon. You take care. Bye-bye now. Hey, Lou. It's Stephen's family from Colorado coming back from another killer trip to Walt Disney World. We usually go down there every fall and bring down our special needs daughter, Mary. She loves it down there. It's the right place for her. And in Disney, all the special needs, handicap accommodations are seamless and they're just built in. But what was really great on this trip was first time and God knows when, our schedule is actually synced up that I had a chance, so we all had a chance to come by and say hello to you at one of your meet and greets. Really, really enjoy that, meeting you, meeting your family, talking about all sorts of random Disney stuff. It was just, just great. Kind of amazes me how anybody as busy as you are can be so generous with your time on events like that, but I guess that's what you do. Lou, you do good work, and you do a lot of it, and we really appreciate it. We will see you on the next trip, and take care, my friend. Take care. You've got a friend in me. Yeah. So this is a first, right? This is, this is one of many firsts. This is the first epilogue that I've ever felt the need to record for the show. And a couple of things. One... I forgot to mention that Meisner's Lounge takes tables in Wonderland, so you get 20% off food and alcohol if you are an annual pass holder. Tables in Wonderland is far and away a uh, one of the best values you can do. And it, DVC. And DVC, right? If you're a DC, DVC oh, member, right. you, get, you get tables in Wonderland. They had blackout dates, they told us. So yesterday was a blackout date because it was Labor Day. 
but we smartly chose Tuesday. <laughs> we chose wisely. So, and speaking of choosing wisely, so this is almost like the shawarma at the end of the Avengers. <laughs> so, and for, for, for everybody on the show, I've done three of these, and Lou steals the check every time and doesn't even let me contribute. So, I uh, I pulled a I pulled a Frank. We'll just call it that. And I decide um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I at least get something in. And we ordered uh, the Remy Martin Louis the Thirteenth. Which we Googled is at the store twelve hundred to three thousand a bottle. Whether you, I, I remember it being a little bit cheaper, uh, duty free in uh, on the cruise, but we Googled three thousand dollars in the store. It is uh, seventy dollars for the half ounce, one hundred thirty five dollars for the one ounce, one hundred ninety five dollars for the one and a half ounce, and two hundred fifty five dollars for the two ounce. So Lou and I are here with two snifters of Louis the Thirteenth. Of which, uh, you know, is Frank's gift on behalf of all the box people to say thank you. Thank you for the show. You always say you ask nothing but comments into iTunes and a, a hug when they see you in the park. So on behalf of all the box people, here is a very, very expensive <laughs> snifter of alcohol that I hope is worth it. So cheers. Thank you. You're going to make me cry, man. Because Louis the Third, it's always the stuff you see on the menu and you laugh at. Like, oh, who really actually ever orders that? Never thinking that I would know what a three-figure snifter of uh, Remy Martin is going to taste like. I have no clue. It's, it's you, me, and P. Diddy have ever <laughs> Well, thank you, sir. This is, uh, it is an honor to share it with you. That's right up there with shawarma. <laughs> it gave me this warm feeling inside, like um, by our fireplace with yeah. Walt Disney and Tinkerbell. This pixie dust going down my throat into my stomach. This is great. It's, uh, it's like a warm hug. It, it's like a warm hug with Lou Mangiello. That. It's a very expensive warm hug. Um, this is a don't do this at home. We are trained professionals. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> My wife's going to kill me, dip it into our vacation fund. But uh, this is what I'm not going to tell her if you won't. Yes, yeah, she is not getting this on her iPod. No, no, no. This, this, this is a, an episode to keep off. Uh, this is, wow. A special night just got specialer. <laughs> Tonight is kind of special. <laughs> Compare the fireball, Lou. Where, where, would, you, where would you put the seven ninety five shot of fireball to the Remy Martin two hundred something dollar shot? So you know, perception is reality, right? So when you when you drink a two hundred ninety five dollar, and it's not even a shot. I mean, we're slow, very slowly sipping this. It by default needs to taste better because it's exponentially more expensive. Yeah, my nose is saying thank you as I inhaled the fumes. Um, this is quite the aperitif. Yeah, you do feel it sort of on the palate and down the throat, and you sort of feel it in your nasal. Pa- it's, uh, I mean, I'm not going to run out and go buy myself a bottle of it. No, no, no. I'll probably never have it again. <laughs> but this is, this I'm, is. Right, I'm making this, I'm making this pour last. This is like when, you know, you do the you know, Keys to the Kingdom tour or upgrade yourself to a concierge suite. It's a once in a lifetime, you know, kind of honeymoon experience. This is Lou and I's bromance honeymoon. <laughs> You took the. I can't believe you said. I'm like, we're really developing quite the bromance here. Yeah, well, this is this is the third date. You know what that means? <laughs> <laughs> Your pain. <laughs> third date it leads to to Remy. Yeah, this is um, this is something very very special. So I I am truly honored to. Have, you're all done already. Look at you. No, Rob. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm licking the snifter. I'm licking the snifter at this. Uh, you can just smell it. Actually, yeah. I almost want to take the snifter home just to be like. Just put it up on the shelf, and this was my one and only taste of Remy. People are going to forget about Schwarmer. They're going to listen to the epilogue <laughs> of this show. You should put it, like, after the, the call-ins. And right. This should be, like, the credits roll. And if, you, if you're a true WDW listener, you've waited for this moment. Well, you know, Lou and I had Remy Martin. This is going at the very, very... So if you have listened all the way to the end, I thank you, and, uh, and I applaud you. Hmm. That's like a seventeen dollar lick at a glass, actually. <laughs> Every little sip, I'm like, "What is this sip actually costing this poor guy?" 
I almost feel like, you know, it's, I should say something like it's got a fruity wood taste, but I don't have anything for that. This was, uh, this was a, a very, very nice evening. This is, this is an evening I will not soon forget. So um, if you see Lou in the park hugging a handshake, and uh, you may want to smell his breath, <laughs> he's probably going to be drunk for a couple weeks after that. Not that I'm going to expect Remy Martin for every meal that I, that I have with, uh, with friends and listeners, but this was, uh, this was neat. This was a lot of fun, man. We, we will do this again, and I promise not keeping you on the hook for, for Remy every single time we do it. It's definitely not happening ever again. <laughs> I have a kid to put through college. <laughs> I do feel. I feel. I do feel warm. Drink some water. Drink some. Water. Drink some water. Yeah. It brings out the flavor that's left in your palate. Mm. It like pulled. Down, it pulled down some aftertaste with the water. This was interesting. This is nice. It almost had like a smooth kind of. Yeah, it's. I was gonna say it smooths it out like in in your throat because you you did sort of feel it. It, 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 yeah, it's like it's like lip, licking a wrapper. <laughs> it's, just, it's just so so nice. It's like licking a wrapper. And I can't now. I can't finish anything else on the charcuterie plate because this needs to be the, the last taste in my mouth. This this is the after 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 taste. Yeah, yeah it's very good. All right, so I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to get yelled at by my wife by rolling in way too late on our family vacation. We'll come up with something. It was something very important we had to It's for discuss. the kids. It's for the kids. <laughs> Do it for the children.